Sweetles. Hey, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to the Webway. Uh, we've got a special guest on today. My bro, Dolph Stephen Lawtor. But before that, we'll roll the intro. Mix travel behavior with tequila. Makes me want to say, yeah, yeah. I'm better in Mexico. Mexico. Hey, yo, what's up, what's up? Welcome back. So, yeah, uh... Steve and Dolph Lord, sorry, Dolph Steve and Lord Tour. Good to have you on, brother. Um, for people that don't know who you are, do you want to sort of say who you are and what you do? <laughs> it's funny, it's funny, yeah. <laughs> Jay Webb, let's go. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Dolph, Dolph Steve and Lord Tour. Uh, currently playing my trade on in England rugby, uh, Bristol Bears. And yeah, that's me in a nutshell, bro. In a nutshell, the rugby player, eh? But you're much more than that, brother. So how are you? Uh, how are you <laughs> finding social isolation over there, G? Right, to be honest, I'm quite enjoying it. Um, me, the missus, and the dog. You know, that's kind of how our holidays go. So it's kind of like an extended holiday. Um, obviously, tough times all around us. Um, some very sad times as well. People around us are, are dying and whatnot. But I'm very grateful that. I got my little bubble. I got my little hub, and we're doing quite well. So yeah. Yo, man. Yeah, it's interesting, eh? Especially, I guess it'll be a little bit different being in the UK. Um, but have you got like a routine, bro? Like, are you, are you, obviously you got to train and shit still. But have you got like a set routine you you stick to? Yeah, I've got a pretty rigid routine. I try and wake up around as late as possible, but Mrs. gets me up around ten, the latest or the earliest, or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get up do a bit of mahi walk the dog um bro, <laughs> read been reading quite a bit and, Ooh. Uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, uh, obviously make dinner bro time flies as well eh? make yeah. dinner and then by the evening you know I'm, I'm jamming online so all good like like i said enjoying the little bubble that i'm living in <laughs> bro hard bro no qualms Congrats on the engagement. All's bloody hell. I thought your knees were stronger than that, but hey, we good. Congrats, nah, Joe. Congrats, yeah, bro. <laughs> Big congrats, Jay. It's it's amazing. Have you like have you got any dates or you sort of just I guess it's a bit hard with COVID nineteen going on, eh? I always kind of said twenty twenty two, so that kind of looks like like a good date that we set. We kind of just kind of chucked it out there. It kind of sounded nice as well, like twenty twenty two, and yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> lips laughing in the background. <laughs> 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 yeah probably a summer wedding not too sure where but uh yeah and no, i'm very very happy she said yes <laughs> yeah she's out the back giving me stick eh? but <laughs> hey, you- your, your knees should be going soon oh bro oh, what? <laughs> Gee, I, I might mind have braced up because i'm good i'm good <laughs> where, where did you um where did you propose to you uh proposed at home oh true um, yeah living knows this we went to amsterdam the week before yeah and i was, I was ready to, to pop the question but you know, sometimes things don't go too well. We were fighting, we were arguing. I was like, nah, stuff this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right time, eh? <laughs> right. <laughs> got to pick the right time, right place. And I know how much she loves our dogs. So I was like, nah, I got to do it at home with the dog. So oh. got the dog involved. Not too, not too much. She just kind of sat there next to me, and and then the knee buckled loose. Ah. All that rehab, <laughs> <laughs> mud, mud knees. No, nah, that's, uh, nah, that's yeah. awesome. Grateful, grateful. She said yes. Yeah, congrats, bro. So. Yeah, I guess no. Nah, it's it's cute that you did it in front of the dogs. I know how much you know how much dogs are a part of your guys' life now, bro. Um, is it is it because have you got a dog in New Zealand and one in Bristol? Eh? Yeah, Yes, so we got a little one here in, in Bristol, a little Steffi. Uh, back home, uh, the dog we do have it's, it's Liv's dog. Yeah, uh, it's a little little ship. Um, it's her dog. But then obviously I, I got it, came to the fold and just fell in love with him, and he's pretty much now my dog. Yeah, uh, trains off me, bro. Takes like burns me hard out gasses me and all that jazz but uh the dog here is a bit slower so makes me feel a bit more special so that's nah, all good eh? <laughs> what is it what does the dog run a bronco mg <laughs> yeah, this dog's a cheat bro this dog here is a cheater a dog back home will probably gas me and get easy under like four minutes or something like the dog here man oh. flat. oh bro speaking of your name bro dolph steven law tour how did that all come about you because that's a bit of a stitch up um growing up my parents were like yo to my older sister she was like you get to name this 
this child coming out and she's like, yeah, sweet, no worries. Came out as a boy. She's like, yeah, cool. I like dolphins. That's my favorite animal. And then thankfully my dad was like, oh yeah, no, nah, you only get three quarters of what you want. So dolphin is. Yo. And then these guys actually stuck it on my birth certificate. <laughs> Bro, I've seen a stitch up there, but it's one of those things just Bro. growing up with it, blow up a balloon, got to let it go and just accept it. Eh? So uh, dolphin is. Bro. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Dolph's a gangster name, bro. I'd rather Dolph than Joe. Fucking Joe's like Joe Average, you know? <laughs> bro, Dolph's a mean name, G. You're gonna, like, nah, another I'm, grateful. I'm grateful for Dolph now. I'm grateful. But, you know, growing up as a kid, man, I just get all the mocks, eh? Oh, bro. Get all the Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't a very pleasant time, but uh, I was just lucky as well. I was, I was like a big kid to talk, and so, um, yeah, they weren't too harsh. Yeah, I was going to say, what are they going to say to you, bro? If, uh, so, yeah, speaking of childhood all the way back, bro, we'll turn the, we'll turn the clock back a little bit. Um, you were born in Auckland. How, how did you enjoy growing up in Auckland? Uh, yeah, Auckland, born and bred, an actual woman's. Um, bro, I loved it. I loved my time in Auckland and probably will settle up there. You know, it's just familiar, but um, enjoying life in the UK at the moment. Yeah. You know, high school, all that jazz. Um, at the time I had my siblings and my family there that was great man yeah like obviously growing up there I can't say anything bad about it but then the, for other people coming from bigger cities or coming to Limitor and I'm like uh, maybe not <laughs> yeah 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 because you, you went to Mags eh yeah man I'm a grandma boy yeah uh, school of hard knocks some people won't agree with that but <laughs> tell them to, I'm directing to Sunny Bill let's go uh, <laughs> did you enjoy mags bro yeah mags on real eh? um thoroughly enjoyed it so a lot of good friends from that from that time a lot of good rugby mates and just guys that didn't play rugby either and just, we had a real good kind of i want to say ethos but kind of ethos at school yeah uh, i was one of those ones where you know the old times in the old times like um i guess the sports stars would get the special treatment and stuff but at our school, bro, it was, <laughs> it was pretty rough. Eh? Like, if you don't go to class, you're not playing in the weekends. So, like, it kind of bred, like, what I'm always a fan of was life balance. So, yeah, um, the guys in and around us there, you know, all kind of bought into that. And now, nah, like I said, like, everyone was getting their grades or trying to get their grades up. Yeah. And- bro, th- that's mean, bro, because at, at, um, at high schools now, or when I was at school, I know that wasn't the case, bro. You could be, you could be failing and playing. Obviously, it's frowned upon, but... Mm. If I, you know, failed a paper, not that I would, because you know, straight as, um, <laughs> then I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I, I, st- I could still play, you know. So you're saying at Mags, mm-hmm. if you were like, you know, not pulling your way in the in the classroom, it would be like Coach Kaida styles. You, you couldn't play. Pretty much, like I think the biggest one was attendance. You know, like yeah, back in the days, you'd kind of just rock up and play, train and play. Yeah, but um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of my seniors, when I was like fifth form or sixth form, I see a lot of my seventh form teammates just picking up rubbish during detention and stuff, just trying to clear off all the detentions. If you don't clear your detentions, you're yeah, you're not you're not jamming in the weekends. So, oh, true. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. You kind of say it's pretty strict, but you know, I quite enjoyed that that whole kind of mentality. You know, get the job done in the classroom, you get to jam in the weekend as well. So, yeah, all good. Oh, for sure, bro. And that's what life's like, bro. You've got deadlines and you've got to meet them. And I guess putting those practices in place at an early stage is um is massive. So from Mags, bro, you um obviously you loved it there. Did you find your passion playing rugby at Mags, you think? Or was bro, it before that? Why. I think it was before. Like, honestly, like just watching the old man, this is going to sound pretty soppy, but um, – Watching the old man play when I was growing up, there was a few times when I was like, yo, this is cool. Um, yeah. I try to give it a jam. I, can't, I guess Mags is kind of where I kind of grew into it. I, I grew a bit taller and I was like, oh, yo, making a few rep teams. Yeah. Got dealt a few uh, cards and I was like, yo, I'll just deal with it. Yo, yo, here we go. Yeah. Um, and progressed on and I was like, hey, you're not too bad at this, eh? So, yeah. hey, here we are couple of years later obviously some aspects of the game are still pretty horrible but <laughs> these coaches see something like yo please chances <laughs> <laughs> bro your hairstyle hasn't that's changed all. that's one thing <laughs> i think that's see that's the common denominator <laughs> keep the hairstyle and you keep getting picks so, <laughs> hey if things happen 
keep going the way they're going, man. This here's staying, man. 100%, bro. Why change it? It ain't broken, dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so from Mags, you went in, because you made, uh, did you make schools and go play 20s? Yeah, that was the progression. Um, yeah. After that, you made, you made schools. I kind of got scraped into schools. Um, and then New Zealand 20s, that was an eye-opener. You know, some, we used to have massive boot camps, some training camps, and probably some of the toughest sessions I've ever done, you know, back in the days. Um, True. But yeah, it was one of those things you just had to learn how to drive and just get your ass into gear. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us from, the, from that team or from that age group, you know, I, I thought could have played professional, but I was just a really talented uh, group of 20s, I guess. Yeah, who was who was in your year? Was it Lima and stuff? <laughs> Lima Sops. Yeah, we got it. We had a few guys. We had three. I'll just talk about the tens. We carried three tens that year. Gareth Anscombe, who now plays for Wales, and obviously Bodie Barrett. Oh he was wow! Fullback for us. Lima was running ten. Lima was running the cutter. So um, yeah, we had quite a bit of talent then. Unreal, but, bro. Don't worry, Uso. I was doing the graft up front, Uso. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, were, you were doing all the hard mucking and they just got all the credit, eh? I'm just out here like tackling people and putting made into malls and scrums, but yeah, no, they just do the razzle. <laughs> it's, that's funny though, bro. You saying how, you know, the training and stuff were hard for 20s. I guess that's the progression though, eh? Because they sort of want, I'm guessing their mindset is, you know, this is what, like a little taste of what the All Blacks is going to be like. And this is, you know, if you want to train hard, put in the right sort of mentality and the right sort of um, training now so that you can be in all black. I'm guess is that, do you think that's got a part of it as well? Yeah, for sure. Like definitely they try to break us. I, I know that for sure. Like as a group, like some of those trainings, they were just, it took us to some army camp. I remember one and <laughs> one time they sent us out in the middle of the night. You had to sleep out, camp out by yourself. What? Um, yeah, genuine. <laughs> And they gave us like, honestly, probably like 30 minutes notice. Called a meeting, like after dinner, everyone came to a meeting and then, hey guys, you're getting dropped in the middle of the forest. Uh, everyone's gonna sleep by themselves, get packing. And it was kind of like, bro, panic stations there. What? I remember like asking all the hearty boys, like, you know, just the guys who like do, do a bit of hunting, it's like, gee, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> and they, they were, they're walking around like, all cruisy and like obviously they've done this quite a bit and I was like nah gee gotta, gotta tap into my Samoan heritage here to my Samoan roots <laughs> <laughs> bro what that's crazy yeah. so what you what did you what did you bring um they gave us a tarpaulin um yeah. I think it was a sleeping bag and that's pretty much it eh? like the clothes on your back damn um any Ubers <laughs> <laughs> yeah we walked down this footpath and they were like okay yeah Dolph you go down that way go 20 meters and I was like oh, come on <laughs> uh, yeah you should have tapped on the on the back of one of the hunting boys bro <laughs> Very hard, uh, pretty much that night I think the similar story was everyone just wrapped themselves up in the top hole and just like hoped the bugs didn't get in oh, bro. so no one got any sleep the next day we got hammered at training yeah like I said they're just trying to break us Bro, that's crazy. I didn't even realize I did that. That's as you say, that's sort of like army training, eh? Bro. Yeah. So after that, bro, you went on to play for Auckland and then the Blues. Um, were you like was there any other teams in mind? Was it always gonna be Auckland? Nah, it was always Auckland, bro. Yeah. Like Auckland born and bred, blues born and bred. Wanted to call Eden Park my home. Yeah. And then quite fortunate enough to be able to, I guess, live out that dream. Um nah, I was just pretty proud moment, so just being to get out there and just like my favorite brand, just go out there and just do it. Yeah, bro. And you just do it. You played there for a good few years, bro. What was did you enjoy it up there? Yeah, man, I loved it. Like, obviously, we weren't doing too great, but <laughs> yeah, got to call Eden Park my home. Yeah, um, try to make my family proud. Um, you know, we had a few instances where we had some pretty good matches, some pretty good moments, and then we're like, yeah, no, we could we could do this, but it never it never eventuated. But I'm pretty proud of the Blues this year. Oh, obviously things kind of turned custard off uh, with the COVID and whatnot. But yeah. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. So I was, I was cheering from the sidelines, repping but, hard from the UK. Bro, hard. Do you, oh, gee, it's because you poached our uh, boy Bowden Barrett from Wally, Gene. <laughs> he saw the light. Oops, he saw the light. He saw the light, bro. Now nah, that'd be huge, though. Would you ever think about going back and playing for the Blues after your stint in the UK? Yeah, I always think about it, you know, especially when contracts are up. Um, <laughs> especially now with COVID and whatnot. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, New Zealand kind of seems to be the kind of safe haven, but um, definitely one of my goals is to reach 100 games for the Blues. Yeah, because um, you're on 74, eh? Can, yeah, 74. So hopefully, in, you know, I can go there as an old timer, come off the bench. Yeah. <laughs> no. 20 like, minute stints. Let's go. Bro, jump on the wing, guys. Have to. No, nah, bro. Oh, hell no. Bro, I've seen, seen that pass from. Um, when you play for the Barbarians, bro, you can maybe bring up, you know, you start, start a football career, G. Let's go. <laughs> Honestly, hey, I, I wish I grew up in the States sometimes, but then also grateful for my experiences in New Zealand. Yeah. Like just the, the way they do sport, the way they support, uh, maybe not some of their, uh, maybe not some of their confidence. I think some of them are very confident, but man, Love the way they do sport and now, bro. They've got athletes out there. They got beasts. Oh, bro, hard. Yeah, I don't know about confidence. It's more, it's more cocky eh, on that uh, on that side. <laughs> oh, you see it. I was like, it's just a few of them. Just a few of them. Yeah, so, yeah. Have to. Hey, but you can say that. You can say the same thing about Kiwi. So yeah, it's all good for sure, bro. So best, best and worst teammate, bro, for the Blues. Oh, best and worst. You've got a few, eh? Oh man, I'm just throwing my, my boy Aki in the deep end here and just say <laughs> Aki was honestly one of God's gifts to earth. But then other times, just like, oh, what are you up to? <laughs> like, oh, I don't want to get into too much details. Like, defensively, it'd be like me or him would get around the corner. Yeah. To, to try and make a few tackles. And sometimes it'd be his turn, and I'd be like, look around, like, he'll be right next to me. You're like, oh, come on, oh, see what happened, bro. <laughs> it's your turn, bro. I'm, a, I'm Jack, oh, it's your turn. <laughs> Pretty much, like, got to the point where he was like, yeah, sweet, understood the balance, you know what I mean? Just sharing the workload. But yeah, yeah man, God's given give the ball, bro. Unreal. Oh, Unreal. Bro, hard. And uh, what? Best teammate. Ooh. Bro, that's hard on there. Like, oof. bro, I played alongside some giants there. I can't even say. But I can't pick a best teammate. But I'll pick the guys I most respected from the Blues. Oh, no, I most respected both. Like, I'm going to have to go to Lorms and obviously Woodcock and then Kevy Mialami. Like, Kevy was the guy, like, yeah. looked after me, protected me. Professional as hell. Yeah. Good man, good dude. I honestly can't speak highly enough of Kevy Mialami. Yeah, so do you think he was he one of your biggest influences? You know, coming from uh, through the Auckland program, and then him always being there. I guess he would have been one of your because he was at the Blues for a long time. Was he one of your biggest influences? For a hundred percent, like obviously he was uh, crushing it in the international scene as well. But off the field, man, what people don't know is that Kevy's one of the most humble people you ever come across. So, like, just genuine, kind dude. And then when he gets on the field, just you know, lays the law down. So. Seeing that firsthand, I was like, nah, this is my guy. Eh? You know, when you say, like, um, if he told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? Gee, if Kivy told me to jump off a bridge, I'm off. <laughs> oh, straight up, bro. That, <laughs> well, that's a good way to put it, actually. Was anyone else like growing up, you were like, yeah, that guy's, um, that guy's been a massive influence on my life. Like, I mean, f- for Wellingtonians, it might be Tana or, you know, Jerry Collins, yeah. rest in peace, but, you know, any anyone else? Oh, probably like as a child growing up in the blues and whatnot looking to the to the blues uh spencer bro like that's the guy that made me want to play for the blues back in king carlos yeah obviously i'm pretty gutted he's coaching the canes now but you know all still hail king carlos hey. um, also as you said much... you know he, he saw the light and came back down the wallies <laughs> <laughs> that's good for you <laughs> nah so obviously he had all the razzle back in the days and i was a forward still trying to be razzly trying to copy him obviously got nowhere near but um man, that guy was a goat to me eh? bro hard i see he's doing um i don't know if you've seen bro but he's doing trick shots on tiktok now bro of the sun you seen that <laughs> bro i seen that bro you should show him what's up bro go tell him show him the og trick bro, shots bro i might have to g <laughs> nah joke trick shot tuesday he's <laughs> on TikTok. nah g he's cheating bro he's, he's like at least two years late <laughs> yeah, bro, you gotta you gotta do it two years ago, eh? Cause bro, TikTok's been going crazy. Um, so after the Blues, um, obviously played seventy four caps. Potentially might play some more when you come back to NZ. Um, you went to Bristol. Um, how how did you find that transition? Gee, it was rough, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, bro, uh, um, city life was great. 
Yeah. Like living in amongst the city, like I was quite fortunate. I tell people that it's, it's actually, I think it's like Wellington. So if you want to come to the UK, like obviously London will be like Auckland, the big smoke, but times a million. Yeah. But Bristol's good, man. It's got like a suburbs. It's got a city, not too big, not too small, but then five minutes, 10 minutes to get in. Sure. Especially if you've got guys that hit the town like you. Uh, a lot Uber to get home with all. I, I don't know if it's me. I think it's that guy. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, the younger Joe. The younger Joe. Um, so life outside of rugby was great. Like, but I was just on the field. Eh? My first year here, we were in the second division. Yeah. And my, in terms of a team, in terms of us playing as a team, man, it was rough. Eh? Yeah. Like a new coach. And quite fortunate now that I'm three years deep with him. Yeah. So I understand how he is and, and his kind of background. But the first year, man, honestly, we were doing like nine to fives. And I'm like, bro, we're in the second div. <laughs> and like, we're in second div. Yeah. On, yeah like, yeah, I didn't yeah. sign up for nine to five. Like, yeah. 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 Know, I, I understood why he was doing it. Like, we were pretty average as a team and then kind of got used to it. And that's kind of how we roll now. But yeah. Um, yeah. The first couple months of playing rugby was pretty tough. You think that paid off though, that nine to five sort of strategy that he had? Yeah, I think it did. Eh? Like I always say to the guys, the new guys that come in to our environment, like it's similar, some days will be nine to five and I'm just like, bro, it's not, it's only nine to five if we don't get it right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep repeating the stuff. So our meetings might take, might drag on. It's not because he wants it to drag on, but it's the fact that the last training or the last game we had, we stuffed up again. Yeah. So he's gonna bring it up. If yeah. we didn't stuff it up, hey, it's not in the clip. That's ten minutes out of our day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. All that domino effect. We keep doing the right things at on the game or at training meetings get less and lesser. But yeah, no, we still at an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, for sure. But how did how did it even come about going to Bristol, bro? Um, Bristol. So yeah, before my last year at the Blues, I was I was kind of just looking for some new kind of opportunities, new challenges. Yeah. Um, wanted something new. Well, obviously, I love the Blues. and want to achieve something there. But you know, at the same time, I wanted to just expand my horizons. For sure. Um, was interested in Japan. Yeah. I was pretty keen on it. I was trying to flight, go, go there. Um, but then Bristol came knocking. My old coach, Pat Lamb. Um, gave me a call. I was like, hey, we're pretty interested. We hear you on the market. And I was like, uh, yep, that's pretty far. But, yeah, you know, all in all, I, I kind of leaned towards him because um, I could also still potentially grow in rugby as well. Whereas Japan, I felt if I went to Japan, I'm literally just going out there and trying to be the Jonah Lomu of, yeah. of the Japanese rugby. But yeah, you know, yeah. at the same time, I wanted to see what the English do as well. So that's why that became more, um, what's the word, more attractive and then Yelp yeah. came over to England and, and now I'm here. Yeah, because I guess, go, you know, there's a whole stigma about, you know, all blacks leaving to go to the UK, bro. What stigma? <laughs> bro, and it's just like, I don't, I never got it, bro. Like, you know, either staying and playing for the all blacks and, you know, playing that for the black jersey or hitting and taking some opportunity in the UK. Why, why did you push, you know, going there rather than staying and playing for the ABs? You just, as you said, you wanted some new opportunities and stuff? Yeah, that and, like, a big part of my why and why I play rugby is, you know, obviously to to help my family. Yeah. It's pretty much, you know, and not, like, as plain and simple as it can be, you know, I want to play rugby, get to a high level to, to, to provide for my family. For sure. Um, for me... Like where my family is, being my, my obviously my friends being the first, uh, I guess, immigrants to New Zealand, like first generation immigrants, uh, we went into a comfortable of a place. So I kind of made the decision based on that, you know, could have helped the family. If I stayed in New Zealand, I personally probably could have lived a pretty comfortable life. Yeah. Um, but me coming over here just helped me provide a more comfortable life for, I guess, the people that mattered to me, like my siblings and mum and dad so that was probably the big reason why I came over yeah for sure bro and I mean I was reading an article the other day bro that you can earn six times what you can earn 
in New Zealand and the UK. And I mean, thinking about a rugby career or, you know, any sporting career, you've probably got like, you know, 10 good years, maybe 12, depending on how, you know, depending on what you do. But, you know, in those years, you've got to look after yourself because as you say, you know, me, I'm an IT, I could probably do that for 50 years, bro, you know, but being a rugby player for 12 years, you've got to look after you and you've got to, you know, get the dough while you can, eh, bro? Yeah, for sure. Like, obviously the older I've got, older I've gotten now, you know, the, the phrase, uh, it's a business definitely kind of sings true to me and um, 100% that's how I see it and when I made the decisions, now that's kind of how I, I was able to be at peace with it in a sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's definitely a, a business decision. Like you say, I only got a short career, so try and make the most of it, try to capitalize on it while I can. And then, like I said, you know, trying to make my little bubble, my little family a bit more comfortable. So, yeah, nah, it, was, it was pretty easy at the end of it. Yeah. End of it all. So, what are you thinking? Are you going to be staying in Bristol for a few more years, or are you thinking about coming back to ND? Because, what, you're, are you still young, 28? You got a few good more years in your brother? <sighs> it's funny they say 28. I'm turning 29 soon. So, I was like, damn, you're going to say 29. Uh- <laughs> Bro, I feel like you've bro. I feel like you've been yeah, around I'm still for. Young, I'm still young. I feel like I'm you've still been around young. for ages, though, bro. Uh, no, bro. <laughs> um, now, hopefully, Bristol. First of all, so heavy, and and the numbers are still right because you know, like I said, it's a business. Yeah, if the numbers right, then I stay. But if not, then I look to go elsewhere. But you know, by all accounts, you know, from the communication that I've had with the club and how I'm feeling at the club, then they should. We should renegotiate and, and hopefully extend my time here. But if not, then, you know, it's just what it is. Like I said, it's a business from both sides of the party, so. Oh, fair enough, bro, fair enough. And I mean. After screwing up to business, man. But, I mean, I'm, <laughs> hard, bro. It's way too serious, way too quick, man, eh? Now, now, we've got real, now we've got responsibilities. We've got mortgages. <laughs> like, what the bro, hell? We've got rent. Who, Holy heck. I, I don't know. Who told us to buy a house, eh? Stuff stitch up. Bro, bro 100%, <laughs> like. <laughs> Man, so, all I know is this: the next generation of lure tours, they can just relax. Or hopefully, not relax, but they can hopefully, um, like if they wanted to stay in New Zealand for, I guess, to chase the dream or to, let's say, use their All Blacks, yeah. they can because they'll be like, no need to worry about the bigger family. Will be a, hopefully a, a lot more comfortable. Yeah, credit to you, bro. Putting the fine low first, bro. That's that's amazing. Um, if you, bro, if you didn't play rugby what do you think you'd do i didn't play rugby but i've had a few ideas eh? <laughs> like i want to be a police officer yeah i was like i can see that i don't mind that straight out of school lazy 50k happy days you know you're always laughing yeah um then also want to teach like just a classic bp teacher <laughs> well how to be scacks nah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's down the line. Now <laughs> being 28, turning 29. Oh. <laughs> Just don't say it out loud. Was. I know, I know. Hey, I got accepted the way. Um, no, nah, but that's pretty much the two things there. Oh, and then the other thing, right, right throughout high school, I was, uh, all the subjects I took kind of geared towards being an architect. Oh, true. Um, wanted to kind of design my own house. That's pretty much the biggest reason why I took all the subjects that kind of geared towards it. Then finished high school, then I was like, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing rugby, guys. Would you, but would you would you do that after rugby, potentially? Like, go get a degree in architecture or whatever? See, the, right now I'm probably leaning towards being a teacher. Okay. Um, my missus, her parents are teachers. They're in a good place. Yeah. Um, hopefully I've got all my eggs in, in the right places and then I can, you know, like be a teacher and hopefully influence the next kind of crop of people coming through yeah. and obviously teach the subject that I'm going to be specializing in. PE, run a few laps, get fit also. Yeah. <laughs> Would you want to do that in Auckland or just wherever? Yeah, probably Auckland. Like I said, I'll, I'll probably always end up back in Auckland. Like I, I know it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm familiar with it. It'll be probably slow, like you're saying about Wellington, but uh, by that stage, I'll be pretty happy to for things to slow down. Yeah. No, nah, fair enough, bro. Um, I could see you being a teacher that 100%. So we've got a new segment in the webway called Questions from Your Best Mate. So I've got a few questions. and You can probably guess who your best mate is. Old um, B. Is Rusko. Oh, <laughs> oh, Brooke. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. So, stitch up? <laughs> stitch up. Yeah, so I've asked um, old B. Russ, a.k.a. Brooke Rusko, a.k.a. My FM, Brooke Rusko, um, 
some questions to ask you, bro. So a few of them are pretty funny, I'm going to tell you. But, um, you know, Brooke think, seems to think he's pretty funny. But um, he's yeah, anything you, you but can, funny. I don't know how he got a job on my FM. Hey, you, you should hear him on there, bro. He's, he's pretty good, bro. He's pretty good. He's, he's, he sounds a little different. A little bit, um, but he, he's definitely good at what he does, bro. I didn't even know he was um, into his music that much, but he's been fucking killing it, bro. I guess he's got the face for it, so it's all good. Yeah, I think that's that's what I'm on CV, definitely, but I've got a face for radio, and I think he, he got it through that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. All right, Brooke, love yours. All right, uh, first question um, from, from your best mate is, he wanted to know, do you wear a T-shirt yet? Because <laughs> you know, Dolph, you got a, you got a rug on you, bro. And I mean, it's coming into summer in the UK. Just he wanted to know, do you wear a t-shirt yet? The t-shirt stays firmly on in the UK, <laughs> even though it might turn summer. It is still very cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, bro. Is it? Oh, because it must be getting a little bit warmer now, though, eh? It's getting warm. It's coming to spring. Like the sun's out. It's great. But then you know, you get these whiffs of the wind, and I'm like, yeah, nah, bolt. Stay indoors. Yeah. Second question is, do you wish you played for the Hurricanes? Oh, that's a great question, bro. Thank you for asking that. And the answer is no. <laughs> no I want to stay hearty to the Blues. Um, yeah. And I guess he wanted to follow up with, do you think you'll ever come back to New Zealand? Rugby? But we sort of touched on that, didn't we? Mm. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. But, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I mean... Blues, as I say, Blues are looking pretty good, bro. You can slot back in there nicely, I reckon. Yeah, but the thing is, they might not need me. So then I'll, just, I'll, I'll see how the crackers, you know, if they don't need me, then I'll be happy just to you know, spend my time here and enjoy myself. Yeah. But even still, like, if you need a bit of experience just for locker room banter, yo, I'm there also. 100%. Oh, bro, imagine that, finishing Bristol wherever you go and then come back and get, get a chip with the Blues, bro. At that stage, they'll be like at least five deep, so I'll just be on that bandwagon like Durant. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that bro. ring, Uso. I don't care what you pay me, bro. I'm, I want to get that ring, Uso. Exactly. exactly. I'm dead at that. Um got pick the, the, the right horse. <laughs> All right, the third question is, will you ever cut your hair? Nope. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we touched on it, bro. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, bro. Exactly. All right, this next one is, oh, Brooks, your driver, he reckons, does it suck being the Robin to Brooke as Batman? Wow. <laughs> Honestly, next question. <laughs> bro, he's, he's going to Russell Westbrook you, Brooke. He's just doing next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is the last one. Are you still cut that Mags won New Zealand secondary school title the year after you left? <laughs> <laughs> and, no, I'll see it no. Because like Great even point. now, if the Blues were to win, then I'm like, yo, I'm on that wagon as well. Ooh. If Mags won, obviously they won the year later when after I left, and I still jumped on that wagon. You know, proud as always to represent. Yeah, hundred. There must be a little bit in you being like, I'm a blue. Like if the Blues won, you, you must a little bit be. Yeah, obviously you're like, yo, Blues, amazing. But there must be a little bit like, oh shit, I wish I was there. But that's always gonna be the ah. case. So, so like. Obviously, that school thing happened the year after I left. They yeah. won nationals, and I didn't. I like had no resentment. I was like, nah. Obviously, love the school, love all that jazz. But then I was like pissed off at like my boy Michael Fats. I was like, gee, why did you play like this last year? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I was pissed off at the school. I was proud of the school and proud of all the achievements of individuals. I was like, why were you mud last year? Yeah. Not mud. But I was like, gee, you're you're two faced. You <laughs> one year later, you want to get front up? Sweet, I see how it is. <laughs> It'll be the same for the Blues. If the Blues win, I'll be like, oh, nah, I sweet. I'll be like to the Ioane brothers, oh, you don't want to be like that when I was there. Oh, yeah, sweet. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> nah, sweet. Hey, Brooke, those questions, well, I'll give you about a five out of ten for those, bro. Um, you got a next question on one of those, but, yeah, I mean, overall, about a five out of ten. What do you reckon, Dolph? Uh, two out of ten. Two, yeah. I mean, rough, rough two. Two out of ten for Brooke, yeah. I mean, for a face of radio, it's not the worst questions. Uh, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> three, three, three out of ten. <laughs> So, bro, so I like finishing with um, a three-course meal. So, basically, it's your, think about it as you're like your last meal. So, you can have any starter, any main, and any dessert you like. Um, and also, a celebrity guest that you want to share it with. you gotta, you got to prep me for this stuff because also it's now I'm going to fumble. Um, um, it's good, bro. So it's off, off the dome, meal. G. 
And then my celebrity. Obviously, my celebrity would be Tom Brady. Let's go. Tom Brady. The goat. Yep. That yep. He ever was. Bro, before we go uh, started, actually, Tom Brady, what are your thoughts on him leaving the Patriots, bruv? Oh, he's got to get paid. Also. It's a business. It's it a business. Got to back the man, bro. True. Nah, I love him, mate. But inspiration. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so you'd have you'd have him as your I celebrity. Um, free course meal. So starter. That guy doesn't eat much. Yeah, that guy doesn't eat much though, so I don't care. I'm just gonna eat for myself then. Correct. Uh, a starter. Oh yeah. I wanna have some type of salad. <laughs> salad. <laughs> Ooh, salad. Ooh. Oh, it's this way he eats something. I have. I like. Let's say a chicken Caesar. Okay. That's always classic. You know, everyone eats a chicken Caesar. Is and that- if he doesn't eat the mains, then all good. I don't care. Yeah. It would be. Is that how you? Is that how you keep your abs? Having salads. <laughs> Listen to the next part. Listen to the next part. This is the <laughs> important part. Obviously, from being of having salmon roots, got to have my taro and coconut cream. Yep. Um, chopped suey. And there's like salmon dish, like fat leafu. Bro, I'm probably just feeding it because I'm over here in the UK and haven't yeah. had it in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say. But that would be my, my dinner. And, and some hearty island food. Yeah. Um, dessert, I'll bring it back around. And let Tom Brady have some. Uh, probably a banoffee pie. <laughs> yeah. Bro, that'd be awesome, bro, getting Tom Brady into the salmon food, though. Yeah, you probably look at it and discuss. Because that guy's got, like, on some pretty rigid diet, eh? Like, Is avocado he? this, avocado that. Uh, and then I look at him, I'm like, oh, it's lucky you're good at football. Bro, <laughs> hard. Bro, and he's been around for a minute. He's like LeBron, eh? He's, bro, the bro doesn't exactly, even age. Bro. So whatever he's doing for food and whatnot, mate, it works. Yeah. And obviously, no. he probably doesn't have taro in his diet, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's mean, bro. So, last question: uh, ten year plan, bro. So, if you could, you know, where do you see yourself in ten years from now? So you'll be twenty three. Oh, thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> ten year plan. Um, without doodling too much, I hope to be back in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, I hope to have winter uni because I plan to go to uni. I yep. went to uni before, but obviously couldn't finish it properly. Uh, I'll go there and just sit, do my three years. I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to that. Eh? Just it's a bit chilled, more environment. Yeah. Um, what were you studying, bro, by the way? I was studying a bachelor in sport. Bachelor in sport. At AUT? Like I was gearing towards uh, at Unitech. Unitech. We had a good relationship there where we trained off the Blues there as well. So they were one of the sponsors. That's cool. But that was what I was gearing towards. You know, yeah. PE, be a teacher, life plan, life hacks done. Mean. So that's pretty much me in 10 years, bro. That sounds boring as hell. Nah, that's not, bro. I'm looking forward to it. That's that's honestly, like, that's what taught me about this rela- uh, This ISO now is like, this is pretty much how it's going to be when I'm like retired. You know what I mean? Yeah how I am now and how content I am in my little bubble. I'm looking forward to that again in the future. So uh, well, that's, looking forward to it. That's reassuring, bro. I mean, and I think going from, you know, being a rugby player and, you know, all the experiences that you've had and then becoming a sports teacher, bro, that would be unreal, like, for the students, you know, the knowledge that you can provide them. Um, because, as I say, all the avenues and being down, being in the UK, being all black, playing for the, you know, barbarians or whatever, you know, that would be amazing, bro. Um so yeah, good on you. And bro, I appreciate you coming on the potty, bro. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Last time I seen you was in Portugal, eh? I know, bro. How, how buzzy was that? That was. I'm, I'm so glad we came across that day. Eh? And bro, hard. Some time. That was unreal. Yeah, bro. Um, but yeah, appreciate you coming on the potty. Also, uh, no, yeah. too kind, brother. Thank what? you for having me. Proud of you also, and I can't wait for you to come back and catch up, or maybe me come over there and uh, come to Bristol. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, sweet brother. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Well up. Let's go. Well, there's a goal.